Welcome back to No, the lithium problem didn't just kill the Big Bang, or liar liar, Big Bang denier, part two. Today's target, the inconvenient truth that breaks the leading Big Bang model, a supposed devastating takedown of the Big Bang model courtesy of the enormous channel Astrum. Now I like Astrum, it's a great channel, they have some great content on that channel. I was really quite surprised by this so-called takedown of the entire Big Bang framework, which he claims is occurring because of the so-called lithium problem. Now, spoiler alert, I already took down Eric Lerner, who does much more divisive and intrusive work on his channel where he hawks his fusion research and appeals to you to support it. Today's video is slightly different because the content is much richer, it's much more well done, and it's much more persuasive, which also leads it to being much more problematic in some sense. And I'm hoping Astrum will see this video and maybe take the time to react to it from a working professional and consult with working professionals. Not just me, but my colleagues who work on the lithium problem and the CMB, both of which are in consonance with the leading Big Bang model. And there's a sleight of hand that Astrum uses at the end that I'll be talking about, where he brings in the work of Stephen Hawking in a way that's completely irrelevant to the point that he's trying to make. So today's supposed theory-wrecking inconvenient truth is, you guessed it, lithium. Because nothing says universe-shattering discovery like the metal that they won't let you bring on airplanes. According to Astrum, the Big Bang model is in serious trouble. It's like a giant cosmic jigsaw puzzle. And guess what? We found a piece that doesn't fit in. Well, that would be bad if it's one of my kids' 10-piece puzzles, but in this case, it's one piece out of literally tens of thousands. Tens of thousands that fit perfectly. The translation is we found a minor inconsistency and let's pretend that the whole thing is under question and crumbling down. That's more of what Lerner does in the video that I did previously. This one's more subtle. First of all, where's all the lithium? Great question. And actually, Astrum does a wonderful job illustrating, animating, and displaying what lithium is and how it's predicted to be formed in trace amounts after the Big Bang. Now, trace amounts is much, much smaller than you could even imagine because the abundance relative to hydrogen and helium, which make up over 99% of what's produced in the Big Bang process and their isotopes, lithium is fractions of parts, parts per million, even less parts per billion. And clearly modern cosmology, just by fact that it can make predictions of an abundance at the parts per billion level is a spectacular success and not the fraud that Eric Lerner and others make it out to be. But there might be more to the story and I think it warrants further exploration. Let's do a quick chemistry lesson as Astrum does very well in his channel. And I wanna recommend his channel overall, except for this one problematic video, which you should watch in order to see how the science communication can sometimes be used to slip in some pieces of disinformation or doubt rather. And stay tuned for later when I'm gonna explore where he actually tries to bring in and evoke past guest Roger Penrose in front of the show to substantiate that this is actually a big problem. It's not. So lithium is formed in tiny amounts during Big Bang nucleosynthesis, right along hydrogen and helium in their isotopes. There's three isotopes of hydrogen, so-called protium with one proton, no neutrons, deuterium with one neutron, and tritium with three neutrons. And then there's helium-3 and helium-4 with either one or two neutrons, respectively. Now, we don't find one of the isotopes of lithium, the two isotopes, lithium-7 and lithium-6, we don't find them in the exact right amount. So not only is the Big Bang under attack, but because the Big Bang is one of the most spectacularly tested theories in all of science, all of science could be under attack. Let's rewind a bit and go back. The Big Bang model is based on physics. I'm an astrophysicist. My degree is in physics, experimental physics to be exact. Astrophysics is the application of the laws of physics, which cover everything from quantum mechanics, nuclear physics, thermodynamics, solid state physics, condensed matter physics, and many, many other subtopics. The only part of physics that's not contained within cosmology, as I joke with my students, is biophysics. And even if we search for aliens and alien life potential, maybe I'll throw in some biophysics as well. But the Big Bang model predicts the abundance of hydrogen and helium at just a fraction of a second, some one millionth to one hundred millionths of a second after the Big Bang. Now, the foreshadowing to Stephen Hawking is when there's a question of whether or not the Big Bang was a singularity. That's completely irrelevant to the question of lithium production. The fact is, all scientists that work in cosmology and astrophysics, both theorists, observers, and experimentalists, agree that the universe is extremely hot and dense at an earlier phase. Whether or not, or if the universe had a Big Bang, singularity or not, is irrelevant to the production of the nuclei that come a microsecond after. That's 
an eternity compared to the 10 to the minus 36th of a second, for example, that inflation predicts when we would be in a purely quantum cosmological epoch. But the establishment of the abundances of the isotopes of helium and hydrogen and lithium are established during a much more classical evolution. It's basically chemistry, nuclear chemistry. And we know a great deal about that. And the abundances of most of the isotopes and elements, beryllium, hydrogen, helium, match exactly. And that's why cherry pickers like Eric Lerner, and unfortunately in this video, Astrom himself, are so quick to pounce on lithium and one of its isotopes not matching the Big Bang prediction. But they're ignoring the spectacular match, not only from nuclear physics calculations done by my incredible geniuses who work in laboratory and nuclear reactor experiments to get cross sections, reaction rates, etc., particle collision rates, and so forth. Not only do they have to ignore those great triumphs, but they also have to ignore the cosmic microwave background, which occurred 380,000 years later, which also predicts the abundances not only of photons and hydrogen atoms, where hydrogen bonds, when a proton bonds with an electron, to form the first atoms in the universe. As I said, that happens 380,000 years later. That also is a tight constraint on how much deuterium and how much isotopes, therefore, of hydrogen, helium, etc., are present in the first microseconds of the universe's existence. Again, none of this is predicated on whether or not there was a singularity in the universe prior to the nucleosynthesis epoch. That occurred at essentially almost infinite temperatures if there was a singularity. And much, much later do things like electroweak decoupling, the strong and weak nuclear forces decoupling, etc. Those occur much, much later. And the universe can be thought of as evolving without the need for quantum gravity, which was the complaint that Hawking talks about in A Brief History of Time in his work with past guest and friend of the show, Sir Roger Penrose. So that's totally irrelevant. The physics of the early universe, when the early universe was a few fractions of a second old, is well understood physics, well within the reach of modern laboratory experiments. It's, it's actually quite within the realm of fusion reactors on Earth. Let's get back to Astrum. Not only is the total lithium amount too low, but the ratio of the two isotopes of lithium, lithium-6 to lithium-7, is way out of whack. Now, is that enough to cause the entire edifice of the Big Bang to collapse? Hardly. That's like finding a skeleton of a Neanderthal that happened to only have four fingers and saying that invalidates the theory of evolution. Okay, maybe he got his finger chopped off in a club battle with his wife. The ratio being off is important, it's interesting, and there are many legitimate scientists that are studying this fact. The existence of the abundance of lithium-6 should be a thousand times less abundant than it is observed to be. So clearly, according to these people that try to take a takedown, is that everything we know about the entire Big Bang, all the observations from barren acoustic oscillations to the cosmic microwave background radiation, we have sub-tenths of a percent precision and accuracy, unlike the detractors who are wrong at the hundreds of percent, not hundredths of percent, but hundreds of percent level. They fail to match predictions. They fail to match the basic observations that would occur, say, in Eric Lerner's favorite model, so-called tired light, which he's been hawking since the 1990s, completely ruled out by all observations at all wavelength scales to date. So it doesn't scrap the Big Bang at all. All it does is illustrate something very funny must be going on with lithium. And we can't go back to the Big Bang and obviously measure the abundance of lithium with some lithiometer, but we can measure it locally. And in some cases, that local amount and abundance of the two different isotopes in the ratio between lithium-7 and lithium-6, as Astrum beautifully demonstrates, could be different. But it would evolve with, say, galactic evolution. And so it may not be a tracer today at the age of the universe being 13.8 billion years. That could be very different from the way it was at time close to zero. And so this is a very tricky thing to do. Not only do you have to understand the chemistry and evolution of chemical abundances and their ratios within stars, you also have to understand how local galactic media may change the abundance ratios because these stars suck up material from their local environment. And yes, there may be quantum effects that are in play that cause us to reevaluate the first moments of the Big Bang's production of lithium, but that won't change. It's very strictly controlled the amount of hydrogen and its and its isotopes. 
those are very strictly nailed down. Those won't change at all. And that's a big problem for the detractors of the Big Bang. They cannot explain it. They try to explain it, but they can't produce enough of the deuterium and helium within stars because stars eventually die. And so for a universe that's infinitely old and never had a Big Bang, as Lerner postulates, these stars would die out and he'd have to find some mechanism completely unknown to anyone else but him, apparently, of producing not only lithium <laughs> properly, but every single element on the periodic table while we're depleting stars via the supernova mechanism that gives rise to things like these meteorites, which you can obtain for free. I don't give these away. I don't sell these. I'm not sponsored by Big Meteorite, unlike my friends at Astrum, who has a lovely skincare product that he's happy to sell you and sponsor his video. He does a completely enviable product placement <laughs> in the middle of his video. I urge you to check it out, if nothing else, but for a laugh that you'll get when he's talking about the lithium present in the sunscreen from his advertiser. But anyway, there's nothing relevant about the lithium discrepancy that poses a problem for the cosmogenesis event. Nothing about it is an open question, open wound, or open sore when it comes to evaluating whether or not the universe began with a singularity or not. There are many models, including very reputable scientists like my friend Paul Steinhardt, Anna Aegis, Neil Turok, and many others who have been on the show that don't go through a quantum phase of the universe's early phase at all. In fact, they have bouncing and a purely classical phase. And that's great because we should have as many models as possible. The one thing that they do that, that Astrum and I don't give him any grief for this because he's not a practicing scientist, but Lerner claims to be. And if Lerner was a proper scientist, he would realize that the most important thing about a scientific model is that you can prove it wrong, not that you can prove it right. Now, he thinks he's proven it wrong through one piece of data out of a near landslide of data supporting the Big Bang model. This one lithium discrepancy he's hung his hat on completely, while it's not exactly clear how at all lithium can be produced in his model. And he actually agrees that in his model of lithium production, we can see the earlier video, lithium is produced through cosmic ray spallation and other processes, and he gets the ratio wrong too. <laughs> so he admits that, but he of course says, this is more of a devastating blow to the Big Bang than it is to his model, which again is partially related to what's called tired light, which is invalidated and disowned by its creator, Tolman and others, as far back as almost 80, 90 years ago. And so Certainly by the time of the cosmic microwave background, there's no evidence for it, and the evidence from distant quasar observations are suggestive that light does not get tired because we don't see these fuzzy galaxy shapes. This is a common trope that is afflicting modern society. It goes along with something called Brandolini's Law, which suggests that it's tens or hundreds of times easier to create a BS, as Brandolini called it, theory or a conjecture, than it is to refute it. So the world is left with mountains of unrefuted BS. And that I do find is quite troubling. Now these videos have been seen by over half a million people, the two that I've described in the short series on the lithium problem and the problem of Big Bang denialism. While they're not hawking skincare products or nuclear fusion, there are troubling problems that are common between these two types of videos. Again, I have more of an issue with Lerner than I do with Astrum because Astrum is not claiming to be a proper scientist. He's claiming to report on it. But there is an obligation, Astrum, if you're listening, to report accurately and actually interview and discuss these things, not as a collab or something like that, but you should have actually reached out to the scientists that are working on this problem. And I can give you a handful of people that would be happy to talk to you about it. So this is a sign that the standard model is better than ever. However, there will always be questions in it. And the common trope that I always find is that one measurement out of place does not invalidate an entire scientific field. In fact, it's a sign of healthy academic research. There are mountains of evidence that converge upon an explanation from multiple different avenues. That's the way science works. But if you find one missing piece, you may use that to sell skincare products or nuclear fusion, but it's not actually going to make a big difference. People don't believe there's a motivation for the universe to have started with the Big Bang as a part of a hoax or a cabal. It bears explanation. It's a trope that people from Big Bang deniers to round earth deniers to evolution deniers to vaccine deniers, it's dangerous misinformation that follows a predictable pattern. First, someone will cherry pick one unresolved question, ignoring overwhelming evidence. They'll latch onto that like a dog on a bone they'll ignore the evidence that supports the model at their own peril. Then they'll misrepresent the nature of scientific progress, implanting doubt where there is none. Throw in an ad for your favorite product, product placement, and you get this complete package of either grifting or clickbait, depending on your perspective. So 
One piece of discrepant evidence doesn't invalidate the established models that have stood the test of time for over 70 years now that the Big Bang happened. We still don't understand the initial conditions. We may never understand the initial conditions. But it would be akin to denying evolution because it follows the same logic as the so-called missing link argument, where we have failed to find a missing link between early primate ancestors, common ancestors to humans and primates. And so because we don't have that, the whole edifice of evolution, ignoring everything that we know about genetics and molecular biology, to things as esoteric as linguistic evolution, to the entire flora and fauna, common ancestry that has been held up in the archeological record for the last six or seven decades. But sure, it makes for entertaining clickbait. And I don't fault people for trying to get those clicks and likes, but I just fault them for the comments in the sections below their videos where they hear people saying, I knew they were lying to us. Thank you for telling us, Eric Lerner. Now we know the truth. So will they now reject germ theory? Will they stop getting vaccinated? Now I know you're out there saying, well, what about COVID? Well, what about COVID? Did you have on Dr. Jay Bhattacharya, any of you out there, and give him prominence in 2022 when he was being attacked by the likes of Tony Fauci and Francis Collins, the leader of the NIH, threatening and hoping for a devastating takedown by the Washington Post and major media outlets of his research that suggested that we were incorrect to be trying to vaccinate and the entire population rather than achieve herd immunity. So F off if you think that I'm not a stalwart defender and questioner of following the science. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying when there's overwhelming, abundant evidence, when it doesn't have a monetary or political bent, for example, as the flat earth or the moon landing or Big Bang does, you shouldn't reject it because it makes you dumber and it makes society dumber as a whole. Part of the mission of these channels that I represent is to educate for free. I'm not selling it. There's no sponsors on this video. But the point is, I really want to make sure that we have a belief and faith in science when we need it. Because as I asked Dr. Jay Bhattacharya in our interview, what happens when the next pandemic comes along and it's much worse? And we do need to achieve herd immunity through vaccination. People won't trust science because of the abuse of science that many like Fauci and Collins seem to have indicated during the shameful COVID-19 lockdowns. Not the pandemic, it was the lockdowns that were so devastating according to Jay Bhattacharya who is now, by now, hopefully, the National Institute of Health director. Save the comments about, you know, Keating being a shill. There's nothing for me to shill. There's no, NASA doesn't pay me to make these videos. There's no cabal behind Big Bang, like Pfizer, you know, is gonna sponsor this video because they have something to gain from giving out prescriptions for lithium, even though they do probably do that for some of their medication. But it's off-brand or it's off-patent. off, off patent. So if you wouldn't reject the theory of evolution, or the theory of Newtonian gravity, even for one piece that's discrepant. Oh, okay, don't get me started on gravity. You shouldn't neglect the Big Bang model either because of this missing so-called lithium problem. If you are, you might just be a Big Bang denier. Science actually is a collaborative, self-correcting process. And scientists more than anyone should be willing to be proven wrong because that's the way that we make progress to get closer to truth. I'm Brian Keating, Chancellor's Distinguished Professor of Physics at the University of California, San Diego. And until next time, keep an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out of your skull.